Long ago, before the days of mankind and the very earth beneath their feet, there was nothing but noon. Ancient and still, noon was a primordial water that made up the darkness of the beginning. From the dark waters rose a shining egg. This egg was the god Ra, who was almost as powerful as the ancient Nu. So powerful were his words that by naming something, it came into being. Thus, creation began. He created the rising sun, naming it Kepera. Next was Atum, which became the evening. With these words, the first day was created. Yet these words and names did not merely bring the world into creation, they also created Ra's children, the first gods and goddesses of mankind. He named the winds Shu. The first rains were known as Tefnu. They fell upon Keb and the earth was born. The sky was known as Neb, and the river Nile flowed through the lands of Egypt when he named Hapi. When his children were created and the world was spread out before him, Ra created all of the living things upon his world. For the world, he created men and women last. He looked down on them and changed his shape, taking on the likeness of man. He descended to them, becoming the first pharaoh. For thousands of years, he ruled mankind, living as one of them. Yet, though he was a god in the form of a man, Ra aged as any other man would. As Ra aged, his people did not respect him as they once did and disobeyed his laws. He called forth his children, the gods, to discuss what they should do. In this meeting, Noon arrived. Ra asked the primordial being, what should be done? The great Noon told Ra that he should set loose destruction and death upon the people, so that they would learn to fear the great god once again. Ra called destruction, death, and war into the world and created Shekmet. His daughter, the lioness of destruction, charged into the world of man. True happiness for Shekmet was the death of mankind. She drank their blood. Death washed over the lands of Egypt, for if you were found by Shekmet, you were slain. Ra looked over his daughter's work, over the lands that he once created. She called out to her father, rejoicing in the vengeance that she had brought to the world of man in her father's name. But Ra was saddened by what he saw and felt pity for his creation. He realized that even with all of his power, he could not stop the slaughter that Shekmet brought on the world. He called forth for the most swift and silent of runners, who could evade his daughter's wrath. These messengers gathered beer and red oak from the lands of Egypt. They discovered where Shekmet planned to enact her slaughter the next day. Ra commanded his men to mix the beer and red oak together and to flood the lands of Shekmet's next battle. When she arrived in the fields the next day, Shekmet discovered the lands empty of mankind and flooded in red liquid. She was convinced that she must have already slaughtered for the day and began to drink of the blood in celebration. The more she drank, the drunker she became, to the point where she could barely stand. Finally, she stumbled her way to her father and kneeled before him. This was the first day that Shekmet had not killed since her birth. Seeing this, Ra looked down on her and saw that she came in peace. He spoke the words, and she was transformed into Hathor, goddess of love. With peace returning to the land, Ra began to rule once more, yet he was still aging and his body had become frail. With each passing day, Ra's mind deteriorated a little bit more. The younger gods, those who had been born from the first that Ra created, came together. Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys decided that if they were ever to rule mankind, they must learn the secret name that held Ra's power and force him to go back to the heavens. Isis, the wisest and trickiest of the new gods, devised a plan. She followed Ra as he traveled the world. Whenever the old god would drool, his spit created mud, and from this mud, Isis formed the first cobra. She left the snake in the path of the elder god, and when he passed, the cobra bit him and snuck away. Ra's body was racked with pain, and he couldn't understand what had done this to him, for he never created such a creature. Isis came forward, offering to take the pain away with her spells, but she couldn't do this unless she knew the secret name of his power. Finally, Ra was in too much pain and told Isis the secret. He made her vow to never tell another being, though. Now, armed with Ra's secret name, Isis cast a spell and brought relief to the god. Now cured, Ra finally took his place in the heavens. In the day, he travels across the sky as the sun, while at night, he leads the souls of the dead through the dangers of the underworld. If you'd like to hear more tales from Egyptian mythology, be sure to subscribe right here at Tales of Earth, and let us know what else you want to see in the comments down below.